Hey, Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. This is a continuation of last week's video on dual shield flux core welding. That's that's a gas shielded flux core welding where you use a shielding gas as well as flux core wire that's designed to be run with shielding gas. Now, the reason for this video is I got schooled. I was having to do a lot of manipulation of the electrode to control the puddle. It was wanting to sag out on me. Well, I got a lot of comments uh, and a lot of emails also that were like, Man, you're, you're way off on this one. You should be able to run that, that dual shield flux core just straight up, no, no electrode manipulation at all, and have it lay down flat, come out like smooth as glass. I called my buddy Andrew Carden, and he schooled me. <laughs> he really did. He said, if you're trying to lower the wire feed speed, that's just going to get worse. He said, you got to crank it up. What I learned happens when you crank it up, you can see the difference in the, in the arc characteristics. It all of a sudden, the, the tip of that wire kind of turns into a point and fine droplets just drive into the puddle and the arc force makes the puddle fan out and you get good penetration and a flat well without doing any manipulation at all. So I learned the settings that worked on the particular wire that I'm using today. It's a bowler wire. It's a E71T-1 wire 045. That's 1.1 millimeter. And let's let's take a look at the, the, uh, the weld, the arc, and we'll cut and etch Last week's weld, this week's weld, I'll show you the arc shot next to the result of penetration on both. Maybe we'll learn something. Let's do it. This is the weld from last week. It's a vertical T-joint and quarter inch thick metal. And you see I'm making a series of little triangles trying to stay on the leading edge of the puddle and help the weld flatten out. And it worked okay. I'm not going to get any blue ribbons for this weld, that's for sure. It looked like it was penetrating pretty well. I was trying to stay on the leading edge of the puddle, but the outcome is just so-so. I did get a comment on last week's video uh, saying they wished I would have cut, polished, and etched and got a peek at the penetration after I did that weld. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to use this Evolution uh, dry cut saw, and this is not the one that I bought. I wish I bought this one, and I'll tell you why in just a second. The, the clamping mechanism, the vise here, is, is cast and precision machined instead of formed sheet metal. And I bought the cheaper version. And after visiting a friend's fab shop who had this one, I wish I'd have bought this one. So a little heads up for anybody. Got a very nice clamping mechanism on this one. Now I'm going to let this run real time here just to kind of give you an idea of the actual speed that it will cut metal like this. Again, it's quarter inch metal, so that's roughly six millimeters thick. It took about 30 seconds to get through this whole thing and it leaves a, a very nice finish. So if you're going to do a polish and etch, this is a really good way to do it because it takes minimal, minimal sanding and polishing to get something ready to acid etch. And there are lots of different products you can use to reveal the weld nugget. Uh, Naval jelly rust remover works. There are certain types of concrete etch solution that work. I'm, today I'm using a passivation solution for stainless steel. And it, it just works really quickly. So we're getting a peek now at four different welds done with four different techniques. And the thing I the think the takeaway here for me is that all of them basically worked uh, because, of the, because of the process. It's just a good robust process for penetration and making sound ductile welds. Now here's a peek of the technique I use in the puddle. We can correlate that to where I've got the tungsten pointed there. That's a pretty decent little weld nugget. Got a little crown on the weld, nothing too bad. Now, this is where I crank up the voltage and wire feed speed. Remember before I was only running 260 inches a minute, about 23 and a half volts. And it's counterintuitive, but going higher wire feed speed actually helped it lay down flatter. Now this apparatus I'm wearing here, I, I'm doing a valuation for this Optrail E684 weld helmet with a PAPR air supply, filtered air supply on it, and it's too early to tell on that, but I'm getting some time on it, and I will comment on that in a, in a future video. But look at that arc driving in there now, without me doing any manipulation at all. The whole arc characteristic just changed, and I'm actually going fairly slow. I'm not having to go really fast to prevent buildup and prevent crowning. That's a fairly slow travel speed, but you have to hold a really short stick out, and you got to have you got to have the settings right with enough wire feed speed. One swipe of the chip and hammer, fairly flat weld, much more uniform than before. So now we're going to cut that sucker in half, and this is the saw that I bought. You can see a whole different clamping mechanism there, much cheaper 
and I'm going to be sorry for that, I'm pretty sure, because I really wanted a, uh, a dry cut saw that would cut some fairly precise angles, just didn't do my homework. Someone sent me a link uh, for this saw, and it was on sale at Amazon, 186 bucks. so I'm not too sad about that, good price on it, but it's not really what I wanted. For this, it's perfect. For, for making, in fact, I may just relegate it for doing polish and etch specimens like this. Really quick way to cut, get a good finish, polish and etch. And now let's take a look at the weld nugget. And what you see here is really good penetration, but with a flat face of the weld, no real crown there. And that's sometimes that's a really good thing. Let's correlate it now side by side. Once again, a relatively flat face of the weld with good penetration and almost no electrode manipulation. So just to, to kind of summarize, you can go vertical uphill on certain joints, lap joints, T joints, and even other joints, multi-pass joints, if you have your wire feed speed high enough and your voltage and, and wire feed speed balanced out and you use a nice short stick out, you can do zero electrode manipulation and still get a flat weld. This is J.D. Brewer. Uh, owner of Apex Welding Services. I met him at Fabtech in Chicago and it turns out he's about an hour from me so I had to go all the way to Chicago to meet a guy that lives an hour from me. But we're going to be doing some videos in his fab shop as well as on site and coming very soon we're going to be doing a little pipe welding in his shop doing a TIG root and then fill and cap using dual shield flux core using this little Lincoln Power MIG 210 MP which he uses all the time especially on site because it's so portable. So keep an eye out for that video. It should come out next week. All right, well, that about wraps it up. Once again, I appreciate you spending time on my channel. I, I know there are plenty of other choices out there on YouTube. Appreciate you spending time here. We'll see you next week.